This is the B-Fix Conway 2-in-1 OBD2 scan tool and battery tester. Let's take it out of the box. In the box you get the user manual. You get the unit itself here. It has a color LCD screen, of course backlit so you can see it. You have an OBD2 connector right over here. They give you a nice pouch here to store everything in. A cable to connect it to the computer. It's USB to mini USB, which would plug in over here. And that actually does two things for you. First of all, it'll allow you to download the information from the tool. In other words, this can store information in it of what's going on with your car, and then that can be transferred to the computer, and you can then print that out if you want. Uh, also, it's used in case there were any updates to the tool. It's connected to the computer via USB, and that way uh, you can update the firmware on the unit for additional features or bug corrections or anything like that. Uh, all of that is beyond the scope of this video. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how it works. And you also get the battery connector. So the way this works is it's an OBD2 connector that will plug onto here. And they give you the two battery clips that clip onto your battery positive and negative. So these days you can buy OBD2 scan tools by a myriad of different companies. You can buy battery testers from a myriad of different companies. Now what this does is it has combined the best of both worlds. It allows you to not only plug into your car and diagnose that, but also check your battery. So it has all of that software and all of that functionality built in. Now this is, we'll talk about just the scan tool itself, it is a basic scan tool. It's going to be able to read codes from the computer in the car. So if you have a check engine light on, it can tell you what the code is. You can look up a code on here by punching it in using the keypad over here. Um, it'll allow you to erase code. So if you have a check engine light, you can erase that and it'll turn the light off for you. Of course, if you don't fix the problem, that light is probably going to come back. But uh, the error code will give you at least an idea of what to uh, look at to try to repair the problem. Uh, this can show you live data. So it can show you the RPM, the engine, the vehicle speed if you're driving. It can show you the air fuel ratio. It can show you the fuel trim, short term, long term. And it has a whole plethora of different data points that you can set on here for it to display on the screen. And of course it can store all of that information in its memory for later connection to the computer. As far as the battery tester, it does pretty much what any other battery tester out there is going to do. It's not only going to test the state of charge and the state of health of the battery, but it's also going to do a cranking test as well as a charging test to make sure that the alternator is working properly and that the battery can handle the load when the engine is started. Uh, as far as batteries, this can handle all of the different standard types from 6 to 16 volts out there. So pretty much your 6 to 12 volt battery is going to work for the battery test function. Uh, it's going to be able to test regular flooded batteries, AGM or absorbed glass mat, both flat and spiral varieties. It can test gel cell batteries and the EFB batteries as well. So now we're going to go ahead and take this out to the car. I'll show you the OBD2 function as well as the battery test function and then we'll wrap this up. So to connect the tool just find the OBD2 connector under your dashboard and go ahead and plug it right in over there. So here's the screen it's a color LCD it's perfectly readable in real life the problem is this time of day the reflection on the screen is terrible so I'll try my best for you right here. We'll go into diagnose right there and now it's going to enter the system, so it's connected. There we are. Now, it's very hard to read, and as much as I hate to say it, even in real life, due to the colors they chose, it says MIL status is off, and diagnostic trouble codes in this ETU, ECU, it's all there. It's just in sort of a dark gray, so it's a little hard to read. But we'll go ahead and press OK. And now we can go ahead and try some of the functions out, such as read codes. So it asks current DTCs, pending DTCs, permanent DTCs, and record DTC. DTC is diagnostic trouble code. Basically, when you have a check engine light, it's going to set what's called a DTC. 
we're just going to go to the current ones right there so we'll press OK and it says the vehicle has no fault codes very good we'll hit escape to go back and if you had a code you could go to erase codes like that now it's impossible to see in the sun here but if you look there are different indicators here at the bottom of the screen there's actually lights in there a green a yellow and a red the green is illuminated like I said the Sun is washing that out so we can't see that right now but the green is definitely illuminated so you know red yellow or green what's going on with your car at a glance before you even read any codes now uh, we can go over to the I am readiness over here and press that and it asks which ECU, some cars have multiple ones. The engine, which is the one we're most interested in, is one. It says, since DTCs were cleared or this drive cycle, since cleared is fine. Processing. And now it displays this chart here. And it will continue to beep every now and again. On this chart, you're going to see a bunch of check marks on there. And you will also see some universal no symbols, like a no smoking sign kind of thing. The universal no's are not applicable to this vehicle, so you don't have to worry about any of those. If you see an X, that means that either it had failed or it has not processed yet and it's incomplete. But what's really nice about this tool is you have an IM button, so no matter where you are, you can just hit that. It's going to ask which ECU again. And it comes right up with that same screen. I'm just going to exit that so it doesn't beep at us. But what's important about that is if you have a check engine light on, on your car, and the reason that's illuminated right now is because the engine is not running. But if you did actually have a code that's there, um, then you can reset that. But if your state requires inspection on your vehicle, then it resets what's called the drive cycle. And the drive cycle requires you to drive for, oh, 15, 20, 25, maybe even 50 miles, depending on the car, in order for that to reset. If you have a particular problem with your car, a very common one for older vehicles is the PO420 code, which is for the catalytic converter. And if you have that code there, there's no way you're going to pass inspection. However, there's a little bit of a loophole. And if you have one of these readiness monitors, these IM monitors that I was just showing here, if you have one of those not ready, that's okay. And usually the catalytic converter is the last one to come ready. So that means that if you have that pesky P0420 code, you can clear that go for a drive, and then leave the tool plugged in. Every couple of traffic lights or whatever, if you're on like a main road, you can hit that IM button and check. And once you get all the readiness monitors ready, except for one, your check engine light will still be out, and you can go to the service station, get your inspection done, and pass, no problem. Of course, your check engine light will come back, and it'll stay on for the rest of the year. You can always reset it with this tool, but... It will at least skirt the system and allow you to get your vehicle to pass inspection without having to spend thousands of dollars in repair. Now, one other nice thing is the data stream. So let's go down to that there. We'll hit that, which ECU, we'll select that. And it says view all items, select all items, view graphic items, etc. So I'm just going to go through and pick a couple and set that up and show you what it'll do. Now again, because of that color on the right side, it's tough to see really in real life, but I think at this camera angle you can just see it there. And I've selected the engine coolant temperature, the short-term fuel trim for bank one and bank two because this is a V6 engine, the RPM and the ignition timing advance for the number one cylinder. Let's just look for a moment at the RPM there. It's a zero RPM because the engine isn't running, so we'll go ahead and start it. And there you are. Now it's reading the RPM and everything else here. So now, if I rev the engine a bit, you should see the RPM go up. 
and it's quite responsive. Also take a look at the short-term fuel trim there and you see how those numbers change as I rev the engine up. Now that's normal, but sitting at idle, you should be as close to 0% as you can be. It'll take a moment after you rev it up for it to settle back down. And you can see we're plus or minus 1.5%. Um, the upper one, the bank one, looks to be about 4% or so. But again, that will change in time as you leave it. The closer to zero they are, the more perfect the engine is running. And there are pages and pages and pages and pages of information here that you can get, uh, you know, data points that you can get for, you know, how much airflow through the engine and uh, long-term fuel trim and the vehicle speed. If you are driving, it'll show you that because everything is controlled by computer now. So this can read all of that information. Another thing you can do is have it graph items. So right here, I just have the engine RPM. Now, no engine is going to run at a constant RPM, so that's why you see this graph going up and down. We're talking about very minute changes. You could actually see the number down there. So if I go ahead and rev it up a bit, that flattens right out, and you can see how the graph now shows that spike. I'll let it down, I'll speed it up again, so it'll just keep graphing that and go along like that. And eventually in time, it will rescale the graph to show the appropriate thing. And you can also do that with the vehicle speed or any other uh, of the data points that are set. So those are just a few of the features this tool will do. Now I'll show you quickly how the battery will work. All right, so for the battery, it's very easy. We're just gonna go ahead and take the cover off if your car has one. red to your positive, the black to your negative, and the tool goes ahead and powers up. Let me get everything configured here so you can see the screen, and we'll get started. Now unfortunately it's very hard to film outside. You can see the screen no problem in real life, but the reflections and the camera just don't work well. So I'll try my best for you here. We're going to go over to car battery hit OK. It asks in vehicle or out of vehicle. It's in vehicle. And we're going to start with the battery test. So we'll hit that. It says check surface charge, turn lights on, take headlights on about 10 seconds, turn lights off. We'll press OK. And now it asks for the type of battery. So you have all the ones I had mentioned before. This is a regular flooded battery. Select standard. You have cold cranking amps and a whole bunch of other ones that are listed there on the screen. Here in the States, we use CCA cold cranking amps, so we'll select that. And it wants the number. Where is the number? The number is right on the battery itself. If I move the wire out of the way, you'll see that right over here, it says 650. So we'll just go ahead and run that number up to uh, 650. You can hold it. And press OK. It says under measurement. State of health is 88%. It says good, recharge. And it gives you all of the different information there. One in particular, or two in particular, the CCA. Remember it was 650. It says it's putting out 577. So it's in fairly good health. Not perfect, of course. It's a number of years old. And the voltage is 12.59. So reasonably good. And we're going to do the battery test again. It's in vehicle. We did the battery test. We'll go to the cranking test. So we'll hit OK on that. It says, please turn off the engine before pressing OK to enter the test. It's off. We'll press OK. And now it says start engine. It says time was 3621 milliseconds, maximum was 10.76 volts, minimum is 8.52 volts, cranking normal. We'll go back into battery test, and we'll go to the charging test now. This is the ripple test that it's doing here. 
It says loaded testing. And now it says increase RPM to 2500 revolutions per minute and keep it 10 seconds. Press OK to continue. Press OK. It says testing. And it says loaded was 13.5 volts. Unloaded 13.66 volts. Ripple is 0 millivolts, which is excellent. Charging is normal. So once again, this was the B-Fix Conway 2-in-1 OBD2 scan tool and battery tester. An excellent and very capable tool giving you two tools in one. So you really get a lot of value for your dollar. If you'd like to purchase this item, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can find the item available for sale on Amazon. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.